we're going to talk a little bit about a big picture overview of measures of association for 2x2 two two tables. Namely, we're going to introduce the idea of the risk difference, here attributable risk, the risk ratio or rate ratio, as well as the odds ratio. To do so, we're going to work our way through this simple example here. I've kept the example fairly simple numerically, so we can focus on the concepts, not the calculations. And I've used generic terminology. So often when working through two by two table analysis, the terms that get used are for the x variable, we refer to that as exposed, yes or no. And for the y variable, disease, yes or no. It doesn't need to be exposure and disease. We can look at things like, are you male or female? And are you left-handed or right-handed? Okay, but the generic terminology is exposed and diseased. With the exposed, the notation that I'm going to use is I'm going to use E to represent an individual who's exposed and E complement for someone who's not exposed. And for a disease status, I'm going to use D to represent someone who has the disease and D complement for someone who does not have the disease. So looking at the table here, we can label this column as being the column with those who have the disease and those who do not. And we can label this row here as being the individuals who have the exposure and these the individuals who are not. When we set up the table in this exact format, meaning expose on this axis here, yes and no, disease on the top here, yes and no, we can label these cells as A, B, C, and D. Now I want to mention a lot of the formulas for risk difference, risk ratios, odds ratios get presented using A, B, C, Ds. I'm going to steer away from doing that for a few reasons. Um, the first is that if you set the table up in a different way, for example, if you change these rows and swap them, the A cell is actually down here. Okay, so cells get mislabeled and things get calculated incorrectly. Also, our focus is not going to be plugging into formulas and calculating these by hand, so we don't want to distract ourselves that way. And finally, um, the reason, the main reason, is that we're going to end up seeing that the odds ratio, or you may end up seeing that the odds ratio ends up being A times D over B times C. But knowing that an odds ratio is AD over BC tells you nothing about what it actually is trying to measure. Okay, so we'd like to focus on the concept of what is the odds ratio and what is it trying to measure, not that the odds ratio is AD over BC. Just a reminder that when working through the chi-squared test, this tells us nothing about the direction or strength of association. So if we ran through the test, the chi-squared test here, and found that exposure and disease um, were related, or we had evidence to believe they were related, it still wouldn't tell us does exposure increase or decrease your risk, and it doesn't tell us by how much. The probabilities that we generally want to look at comparing through here are what's the probability of developing, developing the disease given that someone is exposed? And again, that's looking at out of these 100 individuals who were exposed to the risk factor, 30 developed the disease. 0.30 or 30%. And we'd like to compare that to what's the probability of developing, developing the disease given they're not exposed. Once again, out of the 100 individuals who are not exposed, 20 developed the disease. Okay, so 0.20 or 20%. Right, so again, we'd like to compare what's the probability of getting the disease for those who were exposed to the risk factor and those who weren't. Okay, so in general, we can think of comparing these two on an additive scale or on a relative scale. Okay, and I'm going to get to exactly what I mean by that um, right now. So the first thing we can think about is getting at the risk difference, abbreviated RD, or sometimes called the attributable risk, AR. These are the exact same concepts, just two different names that get used. This is looking at what's the probability of disease given someone's exposed minus the probability of the disease given they're not exposed. In our example, that's the 30% or the 0.3 minus the 20% or 0.2, which is 0 0.10 here, 10%. Okay, so we can think of this on an additive scale, being exposed to the risk factor increases your risk of disease by 10%, right? The risk goes from 20% up to 30%, or it increases by 10%. And again, that's on an additive scale. 
Some important things to note, this here, our risk difference or attributable risk of 10% is only an estimate. Different set of data, we'd get a slightly different estimate. We can build a confidence interval for this in a pretty similar way to that we um, have before, but we've already learned the foundation for it. Slightly different mechanics. We can also test the hypothesis about this. Right? Test, is the risk difference or attributable risk equal to zero or not? Right? If it's equal to zero, it means there is no difference in these. Right? There is no extra risk um, added by being exposed. And sometimes these get also referred to as excess risk. Right? Or what's the extra risk that comes with exposure? Now, some of you may have looked at difference in proportions. So looking at methods for comparing P1 to P2, or what's the difference in two proportions? This is that exact same stuff there. So building the confidence interval for, the, for this, testing a hypothesis for this, is that exact same difference in two proportions approach that you may have encountered. Um, one final thing worth mentioning here, we won't explicitly talk about it, but if you take one over the risk difference, that gives you something called the number needed to treat. Okay, and again, that's another concept um, worth exploring a little bit on your own or reading about in the notes. We can also think of comparing these two on a relative scale. So this one is called the relative risk. And also, this one also goes by many names, sometimes called relative risk, risk ratio, rate ratio. Okay, there's slight technical differences between the two, but they tend to be used interchangeably for the most part. This is looking at what's the probability of disease given someone's exposed relative to the probability of disease given they're not exposed. In our example, the 0 0.30 or the 30% divided by the 0 0.20 or 20%. This comes out to be 1.5. Again, a lot of ways you can word the interpretation here. Someone who's exposed to the risk factor is one and a half times as likely to get the disease than someone who wasn't exposed. Or on a multiplicative scale, being exposed to the risk factor increases your probability of disease by 50%. So if we subtract one from this, we get 0.5 or 50%. Okay, and again, you can look at that here. If you're not exposed, your risk is 20%. If you're exposed, it goes up to 30%. Right? That's a 50% increase on a relative or multiplicative scale. Okay? It goes from 20 up to 30. A 50% increase on a multiplicative scale, a 10% increase on an additive scale. Okay, so these two here compare these two proportions or probabilities in similar ways, but on an absolute change or a relative change. Both of them give us good pieces of information in slightly different ways. And again, as noted before, this is just an estimate. If we collected a different set of data, we'd get a slightly different relative risk. We can build a confidence interval for this. We can test the hypothesis about it. Test if it's different from one. One being the null value, or being that these two are, the top and the bottom are the same. Um, the final measure, for us to discuss is something called the odds ratio, the abbreviated OR. And in a separate video, we'll talk a little bit about why we might want to um, calculate an odds ratio, why we might want to estimate this. Um, some of the, the quick version now is um, in a case control type design, we can't estimate the prevalence or the incidence. Okay, and this is kind of a workaround, but we'll, we'll discuss that separately. So one thing to recall is that the odds of some event A occurring are the probability it occurs relative to the probability it does not occur. Okay, so for example, if the probability of some event A happening is three quarters, or it happens three, and four, three out of four times, the odds of A happening are three quarters over one quarter, or three over one, or three to one. Three occurrences for every non-occurrence, right? Or it occurs three times out of every four trials. Okay, so odds and probability are very much related, but mathematically, they're slightly different things. Now in English, we use the two terms interchangeably. Mathematically, they're slightly different. So the odds ratio is, rather than being the probability of disease, given they're exposed, it's the odds of disease, given exposed, divided by the odds of disease given they're not exposed. And the odds of disease given they're exposed is the probability of having the disease given they're exposed 
divided by the probability of not having the disease, given they're exposed. The odds of disease for someone who's not exposed is the probability of disease, given they're not exposed, divided by the probability of not having the disease, given that they're not exposed. If you work this out numerically, the probability of disease for someone who's exposed is 30%. The probability of not diseased is 70%. The probability of disease for someone who is not exposed is 20%. So the probability of not having the disease is 80%. If we work this out, it comes out to be 1.71. Okay, and again, pretty similar interpretation um, as the relative risk, but it's stated in terms of odds rather than probabilities. The odds of disease for someone who's exposed are 1.71 times the odds of someone who's not exposed. So if we subtract one from that, for someone who's exposed, the odds of disease increase by 71%. And as, as we noted for the other measures, right, this is just an estimate. We can build a confidence interval for it. We can test the hypothesis for it, right? test if it's significantly different from one. And we can dig a little bit deeper into each of these topics. Eventually, we're going to build up to learning how to, taking some, how to take some of these measures and adjust for other confounding factors and so on. For now, we're laying the base of what is a risk difference, what is a relative risk, and what's an odds ratio. Thanks for watching our video. Subscribe to our channel to see our videos. Stick around, guys, because we got a lot more. Statistics is almost as yummy as chocolate.